Okay, it's question time. So just put your hands up and I'll point at you and we can ask a question. Yes, the gentleman, yeah, there. I think a microphone is going to wing its way over. <laughs> Two microphones are coming, stereo. Um, last night you intimated in the debate that, um, well, that a coalition would be required between the Lib Dems and uh, the Labour Party, but some of the beliefs of obviously the Lib Dems and the Labour are different. How, what compromises would you strike in order to have a coalition government? Now, I wasn't really uh, uh, talking about that uh, last night. What I was talking about, where we had ideas in common, in common uh, with other parties. And I if you look at what we're saying about changes in the political system, I I've just had to face up to the fact, and I've learned over these last two years, that the behaviour of some of our colleagues as members of Parliament was so unacceptable and had to lead to such tough disciplinary action but now has to lead to a change in the whole political system that I now favour a reform of the House of Commons where every MP would be elected by more than 50% of the vote, what's called the alternative vote system, and I favour a reform of the House of Lords where we still have hereditary peers, that is people who just have the title because someone else in the family was happened to be given the title or maybe bought the title a few hundred or years ago or maybe killed someone to get the title. <laughs> uh, and. Uh, and uh, we still have hereditary peers, and we still have a House of Commons completely unelected, a House of Lords that's completely unelected. So what I'm proposing is a referendum next year where the people of the country make a decision. The right to recall a Member of Parliament who's uh, engaged in corrupt activities if Parliament doesn't act. The right to petition Parliament so that the issues that you want debated can be debated. The right to see your MP elected with more than 50% of the vote uh, in future elections and the right to have an elected, not appointed, or hereditary House of Lords. And on these two last issues, we'll vote on these in a referendum in October 2011. Now, a lot of people in the Liberal Party and uh, uh, other uh, parties support these, uh, these proposals. The Conservatives are still in favour of hereditary uh, peers, uh, just like they're still in favour of fox hunting by the looks of things. Uh, they're still in, uh, against a reform of the House of Commons. So I think these things should be put to the vote uh, and I've really been influenced by what I've seen in the political system over the last two years. It's time to make this bigger change, and that's why we think it's better that the people have the final say, and they'll have the final say in a referendum. Okay, I'd, I'd like to actually um, put on that, uh, just add to that, that if the Tory party really believed in fairness, which I think is something that the, the, the whole country reacts to, then hereditary privilege just can't <coughs> continue. It's just a crazy anachronism. So the idea that David Cameron won't move away from having hereditary peers, it, peers is, just, is just crazy, because the country doesn't want it, I don't think. Right, another question. Yes, this gentleman here. What do you think of the main cause of the photography? Um, that we've got to get a message across to people that it's important. You know, if I, I was talking to members of the Youth Parliament uh, a, few, a few days ago, and they were saying, rightly said, they say to people, are you interested in politics? And people may say no. But then you say, are you interested in talking about your prospects for a job or the prospects of your community being a better community? Or are you in favour of talking about uh, the prospects uh, for dealing with some of the social problems that exist in our country? And people say yes. And I think we've got to frame the debate about the big questions that people are concerned about. So, I, you know, I've made speeches on immigration in the last few weeks because if people are concerned about it, we should talk about it. Equally, I've made speeches about the future of jobs and industry, and I'm really excited about the, the technological possibilities available to our country, and therefore the opportunity. 400,000 low-carbon jobs in the next few years. Everything from the electric car to wind power to all sorts of renewables to eco-cities to eco-towns to carbon-free homes, 400,000 jobs, new green engineers, green uh, uh, apprenticeships involved in this new, new industry. Then you take a digital economy, a million new jobs over the next 10 years as we develop a digital economy in this country, fast speed, broadband, available to all. Now, under some people's proposals, you, you'd be lucky if you got it, if you, could, if you could pay for it, because you would only connect up those areas where it was profitable. Under our proposals, every area gets it. So if you're in a rural community or if you're in a poorer part of the city, the super fast broadband will be available. And actually, when you talk to people about the facilities and the amenities they want, then people start to get more, more interested in, in, in what the issues are. So have a debate about the prospects for jobs for the future, and I think you'll get more interest. Okie dokie. Um, I'm going to go over to there. The woman at the back with the uh, purple, with the glasses on, and is it a purple jacket? Please say your name before you do it, just 
personalise it. Be nice. Hey, um, my name's Becca, and I wanted to give you another opportunity to answer what I thought was the most important and relevant question of last night's debate. Um, why are we being over-examined and under-taught? <laughs> I don't think... I just don't think we can escape the fact that in this uh, world uh, you're going to have to have qualifications for the jobs that, that are on offer. And I, I know that you can complain about individual examinations and having uh, this grade and that grade to do, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we need five million more skilled workers in this country over the next few years. Uh, but an employer will not employ someone unless they're absolutely sure they've got the qualifications for the job. So we have got to prove by whatever system we choose uh, that we can uh, uh, certify to uh, people who are employing people uh, that you've got the qualifications that are necessary. So you can look at cutting out the different qualifications at different uh, ages, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to be, have some qualification that you can offer, whether it's in the public sector or the private sector, to an employer. Uh, and I do believe it's necessary, therefore, to have examinations and it's necessary for people to get the qualifications. Less, perhaps, yes, but the necessity for you to be able to leave college or leave university with a qualification to offer is really important. The, the world is changing fast again because if you look at the number of uh, students in Korea, Taiwan, China, uh, in India, massively expanding. Uh, and the qualifications that are required there are growing all the time. And we're going to be in a global marketplace where people will be offering qualifications in science or engineering or whatever subjects it is at a global level. And so I just think we, we can't forget the fact that to, to get a job and to get the progress that you want in your careers, you're going to have to show that you have got the qualifications for the future. Uh, I, I'm not sort of answering the question in the way you want me to do, but I'm being realistic about what, what we all need to show that the qualified people in our country can get the jobs that are available. You see, companies will be able to choose. Do they base themselves in Britain or base themselves in China or base themselves in America? And they'll decide on the level of skills that they can get in this country. A company is really not its physical assets anymore, it's its human assets. And if they know that they can get people with real skills here, and, and Brighton and uh, this area has got great universities and great sort of traditions with colleges uh, doing very well, if they decide they can get the skills here, they'll come to Britain. They'll not go to Ireland, they'll not go to the rest of Europe, and maybe not uh, base themselves in China, India, or, or America. And that's really what we've got to aim for that we have the best qualified, best educated, best trained uh, people in, 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 in history. And that's why I'm so determined to give more people the chance to go to college and university, to have more apprenticeships, to have more people staying on in education till, till 18 to get the qualifications that are, that are necessary. But the qualifications do matter. I'm afraid that is the lesson what we learn over the last few years.